And Justin here today we're going to talk a bit about gain, crunch, overdrive, distortion, fuzz. What are all of these things? Are they the same? A few basic things that we need to understand if you're going to get into playing any sort of rock or using any sort of distortion. Most beginners will want to experiment with it at some point so I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown about the basic things that you might want to know about the different types, kind of how it works. I'm actually using a Kemper profiler for this video. I'm using a, a profile by a guy called Michael Britt, who makes, I think, the best Kemper profiles that are available currently. And I'm using the 69 Marshall 50 G5T setting, but I've turned the gain down, so it's a, a fairly clean sound. Little, tiny little bit of distortion there, but it's pretty clean. Especially if I play lightly, if I really, you know, thrash it. There's a little bit of distortion starting to happen there, but not much. Let's just put on a bit of distortion, Boss DS1. You can hear straight away that it's a different sound. There's something else going on there. It's a lot thicker. You know, it's kind of Metallica or, or Black Sabbath or whatever. That's the kind of, uh, you know, sound that you're getting. The differentiation between a clean sound and a dirty sound could be that extreme. But there are many variables in between. If you're playing blues, you probably want some sort of bit of overdrive, but you might not want like a really heavy duty fuzz. So let's start by talking a bit about the guitar. Now I've, I've picked this particular guitar because it's got a humbucker in the bridge but it's a splittable humbucker, so it can also sound like a single coil, like a you know a regular single pickup. Uh, just by turning this control, I can move between the two different sounds. And I thought it'd be worth just without putting any pedals on, just so you can hear the difference. So I'm just using the bridge. Generally, if you're playing the kind of the rock guitar thing, you're likely to be using the bridge. The other pickups are definitely usable too, depending on the circumstance. But it would seem to me that the most of the time you get the most kind of nice crunchy sound by using the bridge pickup. Now, it's currently on the humbucker mode. If I now slide that back so it's in single coil mode. Here, yeah, there's a big difference. Humbucker. Single coil. So there's already a big difference there. So if you want to play a lot of rock guitar, then you might want to be leaning toward a guitar with a humbucker. That's like the two pickups right next to each other. Uh, humbucker is, it gets its name because when you have a single coil and a lot of distortion, it can get very noisy. Uh, you get a lot of sort of background hum and the humbucker eliminates some of that, which is why it's kind of popular for people using uh, a lot of distortion. These days there are single coils that are, uh, don't have as much noise problems as they used to, but still maybe there a little bit. So when we come to talk about the different types of distortion, they have a different kind of character or a different flavor. And as a beginner, I wouldn't be worrying too much about it. I think maybe by the end of this, I will have, you, you've probably settled a little bit on, on which ones you kind of like and what you like the sound of. I think probably the best thing for a beginner is to get some sort of multi-effects thing. Uh, I always feel like the best beginner amp is this Boss Katana. It's got all of the effects built in. So as a beginner, you don't have to go and buy loads of pedals or try out different stuff. It's there for you to try. You can flick very easily between distortion and overdrive and blues driver and crunch and, you know, explore what those different things mean. And then later on down the line, you might want to go and invest in, you know, super boutique pedals that cost the earth or whatever. But, but Boss, have, you know, I've got pedal, Boss pedals that I bought as a teenager and they're still going strong. They're great quality. Um, you know, this isn't a Boss ad, but they, they do make really great pedals if you're starting out. And the Katana, I think, is a really good way of exploring all of the different pedals in one unit. So you get a bit of better idea of what it is that you like. Now, the pedals that I've picked for today, the first one is a Tube Screamer Mini. Now, um, I've been mucking around with this board for ages. In fact, I've got an original old uh, Tube Screamer right here, which I'd originally set up. But 
you know, you won't find one of those unless you're prepared to stump up a few hundred quid on eBay. And, I've, and, and this mini, the Tube Screamer Mini is the one that I take out when I'm doing like overseas gigs or anything like that. It sounds incredible and it's relatively cheap. So I've popped that one on there so we can hear it. it it's kind of like a mid boost. Tube Screamer type pedals boost the middle frequency of the sound. Uh, let me just, actually, I'll just play it a little bit so you can hear. So here's the clean sound again. Back on Humbuck. Tube Screamer. Now, I've only got the distortion down, you know, on a little bit there. If I turn it up a bit. Now, actually, I'll talk a little bit about the controls here too, the, what we've got going on. So this big one is the amount of distortion that we've got here. Now, on the older Tube Screamers, the knobs are pretty much the same size. Now they've been shrunk down for this mini one. But we've got tone, which is a really important thing with a, with a gain, particularly if we crank the gain up a little bit. If we turn the, the tone down, so like towards like nine o'clock or six o'clock, it's almost like what distortion sounds like in the room next door if your neighbor was playing it. It's, it's, all the top end has kind of disappeared. If we go the other extreme, so turning it right around the other way, it's a lot brighter, a lot sharper. Just at those extremes again. Very round. Very sharp, possibly a little bit too sharp in, in this case. A little bit fiddly having the knob there, but you don't tend to fiddle with them that much uh, once you've got a setting that you like. You tend to leave it fairly static most of the time. Now, the level control, you often use to kind of back the volume down a little bit because the difference between having your distortion and the clean sound can be a bit extreme. So you can use the level control to bring the overall volume back down so that they're similar. Sometimes you'd want distortion as a boost, but sometimes you wouldn't want it to suddenly get crazy loud when you kick your distortion on. That's about there for the level. So by turning the level up, you could use it as a boost, like if you were doing a guitar solo, Generally speaking, I try and set the level so it's about the same when the pedal's on and off, just roughly. Um, things are a little different with the, the Kemper as well compared to going to a real amp. I don't find that the, the jumps in volume are as extreme, but uh, anyway, that's we're getting into fussy stuff. Now, the thing with the Tube Screamer is it boosts the middle of the sound a little bit, so it can, it's great for solos. If you've got a, other distortions and you want to go for a solo, turning that level up, the, the, the tube screen really pokes through. They sound particularly great with Marshall style amplifiers, maybe slightly less so with Fenders, but I mean, that's, you know, uh, a very debatable thing and a very much a choice thing. The thing with this tube screamery sort of, it's a crunchy sound. It tends to boost the input going into the amplifier. So it makes the amp work a little harder. And, and it, that's a, a kind of a characteristic on its own. <laughs> You see, if I back the distortion off here a little bit, if you turn the tone up, you get a kind of a more of a blues. Maybe even a touch more tone. So it's kind of not heavy metal though. It's a bit more maybe ACDC. That kind of, that sound more than like heavy metal. So that's a, a tube screamer. The next one along that I've picked for today is the DS1, a boss pedal. Uh, just because it's really distortion. And if I just kick it on, you can... <laughs> definitely going to be better for the things like a, a Metallica or that kind of stuff. I've got the distortion up pretty high. Just going to turn the tone. <laughs> It's got a very different sound to the tube screen. Or even if I crank the tube screen. Very useful. Depends, and this is why you end up with a lot of different distortion units. There's all of these different kind of flavors that you get depending on what it is that you want to play, what sort of sound you want to make, the style of the songs. 
I don't know how many distortion pedals I've got, probably 30 or 40 different pedals. And each one's got a slightly different characteristic and I'll love it for a little while and then I'll find another one and then I'll love that one for a bit and then I'll go back to an older one and you flit around depending on what things that you want. But this is again one of those reasons why I think as beginners it's a good idea to get a grounding of all of the different types of distortion pedals. Uh, and so you kind of get a bit more familiar with what it is that you really like. Now the third pedal I've picked for today's little demo is the Nobles ODR1, which is a fantastic pedal. It's still regularly on my board. It's relatively cheap uh, and it's got a real wide range of things that it can do. Um, I think it's, a, yeah, it's, it's real good, really good. So there's a kind of a crunchy thing, but you can crank that drive right up. Crank the spectrum up too. Really broad. It really is a great pedal. There are so many different sounds in that little thing. A lot of it's a little bit going to be about tweaking pedals. So uh, it's very awkward to say to someone, oh, you should use exactly these settings or, you know, you can have a, a bit of a rough guide, I guess, but it really makes a big difference on the amp that you're using, the guitar you're using, how high output your pickups are, what pickups you're using. All of, all of those things make a really huge difference. So while you might find that you can get rough settings from somewhere, it doesn't, it's not quite the same thing. These days, of course, a lot of digital stuff where people are using like the Kemper or whatever, you can get whole presets. Same with the Katana, actually. You can get lots of uh, presets that you can download for the Katana. So you get the whole sound all in one with all of the effects. That can be a super useful thing. Um, again, not just to make life easy for yourself and have an instant sound, but to be able to look at what the settings are that make up that preset and then learning how to tweak them a bit so you understand a little bit more about the whole process. That's something I'd definitely recommend that you'll get into doing. Now the last pedal that I've popped on my board here is my Dandrive Austin Pride. Uh, probably the sexiest pedal that I've got and uh, worth more than these pedals combined at least. Uh, beautiful fuzz pedal. I thought I'd give you a bit of an idea of what the fuzz thing's all about. It's, fuzz is like really distorted. There are different, you don't have to use it that way, but that's probably its most uh, defining characteristic is it's like, it feels like it's squeezed and trying to get out. It's, it's quite an aggressive sound. I love this. Yeah. You can hear this noise as well. Fuzz is a different beast. It's, I don't recommend fuzz for beginners, frankly. I think if you're learning to play guitar, you're better off trying to get used to overdrive and distortion, first of all. Fuzz is, takes a little bit of taming. You have to really learn to control it. Things like open strings ringing out can cause a lot of problems when you're using fuzz. So fuzz probably isn't your best starting point for any of that. So. I wouldn't stay, go near Fuzz. I, I love Fuzz. I'm a big Fuzz fan, but uh, probably not the best beginner option. Depending on what type of pedal you get, you're going to have different controls. Some of them are more simple than others. I've got here one of the other ones I was uh, thinking of pulling out is an original uh, Boss OD1, the original overdrive pedal. That only has level and overdrive, no tone control on it at all. Uh, other pedals... Uh, this is a, a Boss Blues Driver, a Keeley modded one, which has an additional switch on it. Um, and it's got that kind of, the most common thing that you're going to see is the amount of distortion, a tone and level. Most distortion pedals are going to have that kind of thing. Fuzz pedals have got a whole heap of other different things because there's different uh, types of transistors that they use to create the fuzz and there's biasing and there's all sorts of other stuff that goes on with fuzz pedals. But most distortion, you're going to have those three things. I, I just noticed here on the, on the nobles here, we've got level and drive, but the middle one, instead of called tone, it's called spectrum. 
Uh, some of them have a different mid control, uh, like the Boss Metal Zone is another one that's got lots of different controls on it. Um, there really are so many gain pedals available and trying to choose one is going to be a bit difficult if you're not really sure what you're looking for. So like I said, I'd recommend either getting a few cheaper pedals. Uh, you know, I massively rate the Boss range just because they last forever. They sound generally really good. Uh, the ODR1, great first choice. The Tube Screamer Mini, great first choice. So a little bit of it's up to, you know, the sound that you want to make, what amp you've got. So I'll think about that a little bit. Um, you can, of course, get distortion in the amp, something I probably should have mentioned earlier. If you've got a valve amplifier and you turn the volume right up and the master volume right down, you'll get yourself some distortion. And that can be a great thing. Um, real valve distortion is generally... In, yeah, it's generally preferred to using pedals. You could boost an already distorted uh, tube amp quite pleasingly. Uh, and some people will pro prefer the sound of pedals always for, into a clean amp. I've always felt like I, I like the crunch that I get from a, a, a real amp being driven a little bit hard. That said, I'm using a camper for this lesson uh, just because of the massive convenience factor. Uh, I'm sure many of you are using plugins and those kind of, you know, digital uh, things in the digital realm where you can get presets for and I, I really encourage you to not just use the presets but go and look inside them what's making up the thing and try tweaking them a bit because the guy who made the presets probably got a different set of speakers and a different guitar and a different hands definitely got different hands to you so therefore it's going to sound a little bit different so it's really important that you try and check it out on your own as well. Uh, if you've got any questions about this stuff, as usual, leave me a comment over on the website. I answer them as often as I possibly can. If you're over on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, like, and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I'm doing anything live. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.